Good morning, good morning, everyone. I'd like you to all stand together with me. Stand up in your spirit. Stand up in your heart. What a beautiful day. Good morning to everyone. We welcome you to our fifth drive-in service. And it's exciting that next Sunday will be our first in-house or inside service. Amen. We will have church at 9 and 11. And I've given you some information on a half sheet. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we share a couple of announcements. But I would like us to just look to God in prayer this morning. In Acts chapter 2, we read about the day of Pentecost. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday is the anniversary of the birth or the beginning of the Church of Jesus Christ, right around 33 AD. So a little under 2,000 years ago, we continue in the succession of the apostles and the leaders of the church and believers throughout the centuries. And here we are today, part of that same glorious church. And on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out and people were filled with the Holy Spirit. And we want that to be our prayer this morning, amen? That we would be filled with the Holy Spirit, that we would be empowered, we would be anointed, we would be transformed by God's power. So all of you, if you would just unite with me and just join your hearts with me as we go to God in prayer, amen. Let's pray together. God, we thank you today that you are real, that you are alive, that you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. God, we just pray that the Holy Spirit would come, fill us, anoint us, refresh us, as we just direct our hearts, as we focus our hearts upon Christ, as we worship him this morning, as we honor him and give him glory, as we sing to him among the nations, we declare that Jesus is is the king he is the savior of the world and so god i pray that the holy spirit would move in these few moments of time that we spend together god bless your church bless your people god we pray that we would all come into unity to love you to serve you to worship you this morning god anoint us as we sing touch our hearts we pray in jesus name and everyone said amen we want to welcome those of you that are watching through live stream. Once again, everyone that's here, we just encourage you to just share this post, this live stream. Every week we have 50, 60, 70 of you that share it, and we're grateful, we're thankful for that. And we just uh, appreciate you helping us get the word out. God bless you. Let's sing and worship together in Jesus' name. Amen.
everyone, just lift your voice in your cars. Come on, just praise the name of our Lord. Worship Him. Hallelujah. 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 God inhabits the praises of His people. Oh, let the presence of God touch you this morning. Refocusing your thoughts, refocusing your heart from to what's really critical in this hour to see Jesus, to focus on Christ. The Bible tells us, set your affections on things that are above. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship Him. We worship Him. We sing. We praise. We honor Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we worship You, Lord. Come on, lift your voice. Come on, love. sing a little louder. Praise a little louder this morning. Worship a little louder today. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we praise you. We worship you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, come on, just sing to the Lord this morning.
Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. How many of you, your faith is being tested, but it's being strengthened during this time? Amen. We are people of faith. We are growing in our faith. God's given us grace. God's given us strength. Amen. Well, it's so good to see everyone this morning, next Sunday. Praise God. We will be in the building. We will have two services, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. You receive some information, and we will be communicating with you through, through the week. We are in the process of getting the building uh, spotless, and we're cleaning, having the rugs cleaned professionally. We are getting everything ready. You are going to be amazed at the transformation of the sanctuary. The whole sanctuary has been painted. We have added new spotlights and done some uh, reconstruction of the platform. It looks amazing. It's going to be a great homecoming. The building's going to be spotless. It's also going to be spacious. We are going to have uh, just 100 seats set up, giving uh, enough room for social distancing. And it's also going to be supernatural. Amen. Amen. God is still God. He is still on the throne. He is still working in your life. He's still working in my life. And we still believe for the power of God to be manifested in our lives and in our church. Amen. Aren't you glad that the church is built not upon a man or a denomination, but, but upon Jesus Christ, the solid rock, the solid foundation of Christ and his word and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So we're in. we are excited about next week. Uh, we want to just give a shout out to all of our neighbors. Uh, we are sorry for any inconvenience that we have caused you, but we want to thank you for your patience. Uh, we will be inside next week, so I'm sure you're grateful to God for that. <laughs> but uh, we hope in some way that what you've heard has been a blessing to you. Amen. 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 This Wednesday night, this Wednesday night will be the beginning of our life groups all meeting at the same time through Zoom. If you are not in a life group, please contact us. We believe it's critical that you are in a small group in the context of, of learning and growing with others. And we will be meeting. I will open up and I, I just would ask you if you would please tune in live stream at 7 o'clock for just 10 or 15 minutes for me to greet you, to pray, give you any announcements. And then at 7.30 to 8.30, all of our life groups will meet in there through Zoom and we'll connect that way. So that's this Wednesday night and we will uh, do that for the month of June and then we'll regroup for July and see how we will, um, how we will meet. This sat coming Saturday, we are having a cleaning day. As I said, we're, we're doing some work uh, throughout the week but we would like to put some finishing touches from nine to one o'clock. You are welcome to come and join with us and to help us to just sanitize this building. And we believe we're gonna go above and beyond uh, the standards and do a, an awesome job just to keep everyone safe and healthy, amen? You can register in your church app um, and, and, and register and let, you, let us know that you're gonna be joining us, amen. I'd like us to pray this morning. I think it's critical that we as a church uh, pray. This is the day of Pentecost. Pentecost is about the book of Acts chapter 2. The Bible tells us it lists over 20 nations that were together. And Luke, the writer of the history of, of the church, the book of Acts, he says that there were people from every nation under heaven. And Pentecost is about bringing together the nations. And if we ever needed to come together in our country, and even in the church, and I believe and I'm grateful for Victory Church, yes. that we are a testimony of people of many different races, many different nations, predominantly about 70% of internationals, of people of color that worship together and love one another and are an example to others and I believe it's so important that we start where we are and we love one another right here amen? Amen, amen but that doesn't mean that we don't speak up for social justice that doesn't mean 
that we don't pray and ask God that he would let justice roll like a river in this nation. We pray that justice would be done in this, this tragic, heart-wrenching murder of a man named George Floyd. That justice would be done for him and his family, but also that there would be justice and, and, and an end to, to this the racist spirit that this country is seen and it's been so prevalent. But can we stop right here? Can we love one another right here? Amen? Can we reach out to people who have different views and also listen and also empathize and, and, and really enter in and have dialogue? Amen? Can we pray for our nation? For unity, for social justice, for the end of hatred. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the great civil rights leader of the 1950s and the 1960s, he said this in 1963. He said, love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. Mm. Jesus said, by this shall all men know you are my disciples and that you have love for one another. Let's start right here. Let's let the love of God shine through us. Let's be ministers of reconciliation, not only reconciling people to God, but the Bible also talks about being reconciled to one another. So let's pray. Would you pray with me? Let's come into agreement. Let's pray what Jesus taught us to pray. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, this morning we just pray. God, we cry out to you as a nation. We cry out to you as a church. Lord, that you would heal our land. God, we confess our sins. We confess our prejudices. God, we confess that we have had things in our heart that are not right. God, I pray that you would touch every heart, Lord. That we would not point fingers, but we would look inward and first deal with the old issues in our own heart. And then in turn, begin to reach out to others in love. And begin to make a change and make a difference. God, we pray, O oh Lord, that in this country there would be righteous laws. There would be righteous judgments. God, we pray against racism and we pray against bigotry and hatred, hatred in all forms, in all shapes, in all sizes. We pray for peace in our nation, God. God, we pray for the end of violence. God, we pray for peaceful protests. We pray that the voices of, uh, of those that have been silenced would be heard. But God, we pray, God, that you, O oh Lord, would reveal yourself in a powerful way. We pray for churches that have been affected. We pray for churches to lead the way, to be a voice of change and social justice. God, I pray today for our nation. We come into agreement and we pray, O oh God, that you would heal our land, O oh God. God, we thank you, Father. We praise you. We give you glory, God. We just commit everything into your hands. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen and Amen this morning. Amen. We praise God. We thank God for all of you that are here this morning. We welcome you. If anyone is visiting for the very first time, we want to welcome you in the name of Jesus. Pray that your life would be touched and impacted in a powerful way. Amen. Amen. If you could hear me, if you're here, would you flash your lights? I, I'm not going to ask you to honk your horn, but wave your flag. Amen. Amen. Good to see you. God bless you. I just want to thank you for your faithful giving. Victory Church has been faithfully giving through online uh, means and through sending in offerings and tithes. And we just thank God for your faithful giving. Pray a blessing over you that you would be blessed. The generous soul will be blessed. Thank you for just giving, giving to the stewardship campaign, giving to missions. You know how to do it. You know how to go online. You know how to send in your checks. And we thank you and appreciate you for that. Just pray God would truly, truly bless you and prosper the church. Those of you that need work, that God would bless and open up opportunities for you. I just encourage you to trust the Lord in all things. God is faithful. Amen. This morning, I want to introduce our...
Uh, you pastor, Pastor Mike, he is going to come and minister the word. Would you give it up for Pastor Mike as he shares the word of God this morning? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. It's a privilege to get to share the word of God and to have to share this unique experience. So that's exactly what it is. And so um, I know with timing, we're going to just pray, get right into the word. I encourage you, if you're watching at home, open up your Bible so you can read along with the scripture, those in your cars. Um, just be attentive to what God wants to speak. So let's go to him in prayer. I need his, I need him right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for just a beautiful morning, God. Lord, five weeks of just perfect weather, Lord. That's because of you, Lord, we're able to do this. Lord, we thank you for the anointing on our staff, on our elders, on our um, just volunteers who have helped make this possible. And God, we look, we look forward to next week, to meeting in our building yet again, Father. And we just ask for your grace as we look to do that. Father, as we open your word in these few moments, Lord, let it just speak to us where we are. We need your word yes, more you. than we've ever needed it before. You, and Father, we thank you and give you glory in advance for what you're about to do. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to be in Matthew chapter 14, and I'm going to be reading verses 22 through 33. And what a powerful time in God's presence during worship. Man, when they started singing that song, Oceans, it just it goes right with the message. And it's just a powerful, powerful song. And, and I want to declare that over um, our body this morning. Let that be our prayer. But in Matthew 14, 22 through 33, it says this. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when, he, <clears throat> when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. And so, I've entitled this message, Looking Beyond the Pandemic. How are we supposed to, as a church, as we look to move back into our building, as we look to come out of this this viral pandemic that has shaken our entire globe as we look and see the injustices being done to people in the streets seeing on video seeing people cry out how are we supposed to look as we watch news feeds of rioting around our country and around our nation what can we as a church do to look beyond this mess and how can we deal with this and i believe there are principles in this story that are going to help us the church rise above this and look beyond it because there's going to be more pandemics. There's going to be more issues of social injustice. And how can we as a church come together so that we aren't sinking beneath the fear and anxiety that is gripping our country? And when I read the first few verses, it says immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat. They had just done ministry, powerful things that happened. And now he's telling them, get in the boat, go to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he dismissed them, it says he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. There are times when things like this happen in our world, we as the church can feel that we are alone. We feel, where is Jesus in this mess? Where is God when this viral pandemic has overtaken our globe? Where is God when people are being hurt in the streets, when things are being done that are out of control? And for these disciples who were trained fishermen, they were in the sea, and all of a sudden this storm gripped them. And we know because they were so fearful, they were trained. But there was something about this specific storm that not only was it out of their control, we see in the crowd, but the boat by this time was a long way from the land. They were a long way from something that was stable. When you're on land during a storm, it's a little easier to bear with the storm when you're standing on solid ground. But when you're in a boat and you're out of control, there's nothing that they could do. 
And right now we have this feeling like we're in a boat. We're far from land. Jesus is not in the boat. And right now the world is crying out. They're reacting based upon what's happening in their circumstances. But this is a message that's not just for people who don't have Jesus. This is a message that is for the church. It's for you. It's for me. How do we react when things like this happen? One interesting thing that I, that I love is that it says, But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. The world is crying out now that, that people are against us. These groups, these people are against us. We're out of control and they're reacting in their rage and anger. But look what it says in 25. In the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. Church, we have to understand that Jesus sent the boat away and he wasn't worrying about how am I going to get to them if trouble happens? How am I going to get across the lake to the people who are sick and dying on the other side that need a touch? He wasn't worried about the natural. I had to take a trip um, last year to Long Island and it's the first time I drove my car until they have ferries that you drive your car onto it and it takes you across. And so I booked my time, and my biggest fear was it took an hour to get to the ferry. And I thought, oh my goodness, if I miss my window, the ferry is going to leave. And I, I'm literally speeding down the highway in fear, trying to get there to, to my appointment. And I actually got there early. They said, oh, there's plenty of room. You can actually jump on a little early. We've got plenty of boats that are going out. Jesus isn't worried about another boat coming by. He knew that he could just walk on the water if that's what it was going to take. And imagine if we as the church aren't bound by natural circumstances. Imagine if we could have that faith. Jesus had just come from doing ministry. He needed to be alone with the Lord to, to get refreshed because ministry was coming again. And he was not bound by the natural things. There's two things that I want us to focus on from this story. When your eyes are on the circumstances, this is what will happen. If we look to what's happening in our world and we keep our eyes just on that, these two things will happen. Your emotions will take over and what you stand on will sink. I'm gonna say that again. When you keep your eyes on the circumstances, your emotions will take over. We have to acknowledge emotions. We have to acknowledge that we're angry, but we can't let them take over us because that's what's happening in our world. And lastly, what you stand on will sink. You might stand on your identity, you might stand on your social media platform, whatever you stand on will begin to sink. But if your eyes are on Jesus, these two things will happen. The natural will not affect you. And secondly, you will experience peace no matter what. The story goes on to say, but when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Church, we have quite a time in the history, as Pastor was mentioning, in the timeline of church history, this is gonna go down. If Jesus is to tarry another 50 years, another 100 years, people will look back on this time and see what happened to our globe. But this is a time where the church can rise up supernaturally and God can use us for powerful things. But we have to look beyond the pandemic. We have to look beyond the social injustices. We have to acknowledge it, but we cannot let it wash over us and cover us and be run on our emotions. In one translation, Mark said that Jesus came to them, but he meant to pass by them. I was just talking with pastor in the office and saying, this is a scary text because Jesus was walking on the water and it says he meant to pass by them, but it says that they saw him. Church, if we don't see Jesus in this season, we will not be useful in pushing and advancing the kingdom of God in our own lives. We have to be with Jesus. We have to see Jesus. The kingdom of God is always advancing. And if we let our emotions take over, if we aren't looking to God and we're looking at to everything else that's falling away to news feeds, to our social media platforms, then what Jesus wants to do will pass us by. But it said that even in the disciples' acknowledgement of being fearful, their acknowledgement of being out of control, they saw Jesus. And when they saw him, Jesus responded to them. But church, Jesus just doesn't want us to see him. 
He wants us to get up and he wants us to move with the kingdom because look what happens. It says, and Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And so he said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. He got out of the boat and he was standing on water. We've heard this story so many times, but in this time that we're walking in, do we have the faith to believe that we can stand above the natural? Jesus is not bound by the natural. He's not bound by, by a certain way of thinking. In church, if we can look to Jesus, if we can call out to him, if we can focus on him, even during this time, God will use us for mighty things. But look what it says. So Peter's walking on the boat, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out. You know what that word afraid means? It means startled by strange sights or occurrences or to be seized with alarm. The world is reacting to this pandemic, to these conspiracy theories of our government. The world is reacting to these injustices done by George Floyd and other people throughout history. They're reacting in the way that they know, in rage and anger. But church, we have a way where we can react. We can acknowledge it, we can talk about it, but we have to rise above it because God wants to use us through this. And we can't look at what's happening in the world and be alarmed. That word afraid literally means to be startled by strange events. You know, I look at all these things, I watch the video. We watch the video. And it's a horrible thing. But then I realized we're living in a world without Jesus. We're living in a fallen world. And anything bad that happens is because we live in a fallen world. But we have a God who came down to us, who filled us with his spirit, who commissioned us to go forward and preach the gospel. And we as the church can be a light during this time. And God is calling out to us for our level of faith to rise up. I thank God for our pastors, for Pastor Richard and Lisa and the vision that they've given us. We are now 11, 12 weeks going through this, but God has given them vision and we are walking through this and people are still coming. Look, at, look around. This is the church, this parking lot. These people watching on live stream faithfully. This is the church rising up. We have to learn how not to be startled by things that happen in the world. When Peter looked to the wind, when he looked to the circumstances, that's when he began to sink. And right now we have a world of people who don't know Jesus, who are looking at the circumstances, they're looking at the virus, they're looking at the videos, they're looking at the news feeds, but that's it. And what they're doing is they're sinking below the waves of anxiety and fear. And that's what the enemy wants. He wants to push us down. He wants to drown us out in fear and anxiety. But the church is being called to rise up, to stand above the natural, and to declare who Jesus is. Amen? We need to look to Jesus during this time. You need to be with Jesus. Not just adults, young adults, youth, children. We have to get our children in the Word of God. We have to get them in the Word so that they can understand who Jesus is even during this time. And it says, so Peter got out of the boat, he walked on the water, and it says, he began to sink when he looked at the waves, but he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately, when he got into the boat, the wind ceased. Church, there's going to be more pandemics. There's going to be more incidents of social injustice. Because we live in a fallen world. But our pers perspective has to change. We may become alarmed in that moment, but we have to look to Jesus, we have to be in his presence. Friday night, Tara and I had our certain routine. We got the girls in bed, hallelujah, thank God. We had some moments of peace. We could eat some ice cream, we could talk. And so we had our agenda. When she fell asleep, I was gonna turn on Xbox to play Call of Duty, that was our goal for the night. But then we started watching worship music and all of a sudden the Spirit of God, we just felt his presence come in the house and we begin to pray. We begin to pray and then we begin to weep. We begin to weep for George Floyd and his family. We begin, to, we begin to weep for all the families who are affected by those who have lost lives during this, this COVID-19. And you know what? Even with our windows open, we could hear the sirens of police cars and fire trucks. But God's presence, it was like a fortress in our house. We weren't affected by it. There was no fear. There was no anxiety. And we didn't want to, we didn't want to get out of that. 
Our night was changed because of that. When Jesus got into the boat, the wind ceased. When you allow Jesus to come into your life, when you allow his focus to come into your gaze, into your direction, the circumstances may not change, but your perspective will. The fears, the anxieties, those will be still and they will be ceased. Pentecost Sunday is when we received one of the greatest things next to Jesus, and that was the gift of the Holy Spirit. That was the gift of the helper. How many of you by flashing your lights know I need help in this time? If I had headlights, I'd be flashing them right now. We need God's help in this time. We need to be filled with the Spirit during this time. When we open these doors and we come in, we cannot be bound by a spirit of fear and a spirit of anxiety. It's not about pointing people to conspiracy theories in the midst of a viral pandemic. It's not about pointing people to a cause or a people group. It's about pointing people to Jesus. We need to see Jesus. This is a world without God. God is looking for people to get out of the boat and rise above the natural and be effective. We are not useful to a dying world when we are sinking. Peter could not get up and do ministry on the other side of the lake when he was sinking. If we are sinking below the fears and the anxieties, we become useless in what the kingdom of God wants to do. So whatever it is that you do, if you're at the, at the protests, don't be there just to be a part of the world. Be there because you're filled with the Spirit of God and pray for people. See what people need in those moments. When people come into our church doors as we open up next week, we don't have to, we need to social distance, but we can still pray. We can still stretch our hand out. We can still ask how people are doing and what they need prayer for. Church will feel different next week, but we have a God who has defied the natural limits to come to us. Masks and church and social distancing will not hinder God moving in power. One of the things that hit me so hard was the fact that we couldn't all just come together in one big gathering. And I was actually upset about that for weeks. But then God began to remind us, even as a staff, that he can move even beyond these circumstances. Look at this. A parking lot filled with people, packed in their cars with their children, hearing the word of God and declaring what he's going to do. Amen? Amen? As I close and pray over us and over the coming week. You know, I want to be just a little transparent in my own life. There's things that have happened in my life. Tara and I went through a, a, a mini pandemic in our own personal life years ago when a man with a gun showed up and tried to go after my wife, after Tara. And to make a long story short, the police saved my life. It actually got to a point where it took 12 officers to wrestle this man because he had shot himself up with some drug. And the crazy thing is, is when they hit their distress signal and our streets were filled with over 25 police cars responding to this issue, I was getting kicked by police because they thought I was part of the struggle, even though I was helping. And you know what's funny? When the mess settled down and they asked where my wife was, to make to write a statement she literally had backed her car through all the police cars and went because she had to open up at starbucks that morning we can have a peace in pandemics we can have a peace when circumstances change and we have no control over it we had to go sit in the courtroom to a dangerousness hearing where this person who attacked my who tried to attack my wife who attacked me who attacked these officers we had to sit, and the point of that dangerousness hearing was to show how dangerous he was. When he came out and changed, and half his face was black and bruised from the fight, I looked at him, and I began to cry in the courtroom. Because God began showing me that he died for him, too. And when we left the courthouse, we ended up praying and crying for his family and forgiving him for what he did. And to this day, the enemy will still try and force my head to say, imagine if, she got, if he got to your wife. There would be no Madeline and no Abigail. There would be no this. But the enemy will still try and remind me about that. And you know what I say? The Lord reminds me and says, you have forgiven him. It's over. And the enemy has no, the enemy has no power over that. Church, we have to learn how to work out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. 
I have a mom who's watching here, who because she decided to adopt kids of different color, people in her own family disowned her. I can get angry, or I can look to her because she's looked to Jesus all these years. God has kept her above the waves, and he's been able to keep my heart above the waves. I can get angry, but I have to look to Jesus. When they came to take Jesus away, Peter drew his sword and cut off the ear of the people who were taking him away. And Jesus said, put your sword in the sheath. This is what I have come to do. Heavenly Father, I pray over our church. I pray over our staff. I pray over our city, over our nation, and over our world. We declare that you are the God who came down to earth to be with us. We declare that you are the God who walked on the storm to come to us when we were far from land, when we couldn't make it, when our boat was about to sink. You are the God who came to us on the water. You came into the boat, you calmed the storm, everything ceased. And Father, I pray that as a church this week, we would look to Jesus. We would be with Jesus this week in our anger, in our rage, in our frustration. Help us to see you. Help us to focus on you. Help us to speak against the lies of the enemy who wants to force us to look to the wind and the waves, to be fearful, to be startled, to be seized with alarm. Help us to focus back on you. Pick us up out of the waves of anxiety. Pick us up out of the sea of fear and help us to walk above it and be impactful. There were people who were sick and dying on the other side of the lake that needed a touch from Jesus. And by your mighty hand, you picked them up and they continued in ministry. God, as we come together next week, God, I pray that you would give us power, that you would give us authority. God, give us wisdom, but come in power. Come with your presence, God, and fill us. Fill us today even as we're in our cars. Fill us today as we're in our homes. We thank you for your word. We thank you for what you have been doing during these weeks, God. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Again, we want to say thank you to those who have come out, who have been faithful. We have offering buckets that are going to be right at the table over there. But if you could please this week be praying with us. Be praying with us as we begin to open up these doors. We cannot wait to be here physically worshiping with you. God bless.